Hello guys, this is Vinit from H Forex, and this is Sunday, fourth of uh, August, twenty twenty four. And I wanted to reach out to you guys, make sure that you guys understand that we at H Forex are experiencing the exact same uh, state as you guys are, who have a certain amount of drawdown at this point because we are in this together because the trades that we take are some of the trades that you guys take. So. That said, we are in this together and we are going through the exact same process and I'm sure there is anxiety you, have, you guys are feeling. So are we, but we know how to handle it. We know how to get out of this situation um, and I'll address the emotional part of it and how to deal with it uh, a bit later. But let's talk about how we got into this situation and what is in the marketplace that actually caused it. So there are two uh, underlying uh, forces that are actually making this happen. One is the weakness in the Canadian dollar. Other is the strength in the uh, Swiss franc. Now, why is this happening? Let's talk about Swiss franc. We all know that there's a lot happening in the Middle East and there is a huge tension, uh, literally a war uh, about to break between Iran and Israel. So this past Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there was a lot of commotion. There was a lot of uh, tension in the marketplace, anxiety that, hey, how is Iran now going to react uh, after the uh, assassination of the Hamas's top guy? So nobody really knows if it's going to be um, a direct attack on Israel, if it's going to be some kind of a coordinated attack through its proxies. So there's a lot of worry that is going on, and that actually drove the markets down tremendously the uh, traditional stock markets around the globe that was actually one of the big big reasons that was not the only reason it was one of the big reasons for the markets to go down so what happens in these kind of cases is when there is a lot of political or war like situation around the globe especially in the middle east where israel and us are on one side that hey things can go south at any point so what happens is people want security people want to get into safety especially before the weekend because if something happens over the weekend they don't know what to do they can't really get out of anything because they're stuck because the markets are closed so what they want to do is they want to get out of their risk assets uh, before the weekend starts so now weekend is here like this is on friday and people are panicking out of stocks people are panicking out of uh, Canadian dollar. I'll tell you why panicking out of Canadian dollar in a bit. So let's talk about, and everybody is going into the US dollar. Okay, because US dollar and uh, Swiss franc, uh, they are the two safe haven currencies in the time of turmoil. So now everybody is rushing into these two currencies, but then all of a sudden what happens is really bad news comes out from the US dollar side, where the uh, employment numbers are one-fourth or one-fifth of the expected number. So they were expecting 500,000 or a half a million jobs created, but only 100,000 and change were actually uh, created. So there was this huge negative news that hit the market uh, as far as the US dollar is concerned. And then people are now running out of, way, out of uh, stocks. People are running out of US dollar, the only bid, and running out of Canadian dollar, running out of Australian dollar running out of euros, everything is being sold in the market. And the only two things that are actually catching the bid or are in demand are the Swiss franc and gold. So now there's such a Swiss franc, you have to guys, you have to understand is Switzerland is not a very big economy and their currency supply is not very big. So even small, a little bit of a demand can move that currency a whole lot. So now people imagine, Everybody around the globe is dumping whatever they have because the weekend nobody knows what's happening. They want the safety. They want to get into the safety trade, which is Swiss franc. So now that drives the emotion to an extreme never seen before because nobody wants uncertainty and nobody wants uh, to carry that trade over the weekend because though they don't know what's going to happen. So they drove the sentiment on Swiss franc bullish sentiment on Swiss franc to the absolute extreme never ever seen in the entire history of forex trading. So this is a one-off black swan event 
that has never ever occurred before okay so that's how extreme it is so now if you're looking at the the screen my screen here if you're looking at the bottom is it rsi 21 on the four hour chart that it's showing you the extreme reading of 15 and change guys anything below 30 is oversold okay anything below 20 is extremely oversold anything around 15 is once in a lifetime kind of oversold or once a decade or once every two decade kind of oversold that's where we are standing that's where we are at at this point with bullishness in uh, uh chf or swiss franc when i say oversold which is i'm showing you the cad chf pair which is sitting at around 15 rsi on 21 rsi not even 14 rsi 21 rsi is showing that kind of an extreme emotion so what happens when you have these kind of emo extreme emotion nine out of ten times actually more than nine, nine out of ten times there is a reversal and a, and a very violent one so if for example if we go back and see last time it went below 30 oh sorry this time yeah here 30 look at the reversal back boom bounce back here again below 30 boom bounce back below 30 boom bounce back here below 30 it got really extreme boom bounce back so we are expecting a bounce back we are expecting bounce back in CAD CHF and extreme emotions and sentiments and uh, bullishness in uh, CHF so we are expecting a lot of that in uh, these two uh, in, in this pair CAD CHF where I okay when I say expecting is it going to happen for sure no but there is an 80 plus percent chance it is going to happen and it's going to happen very soon maybe there's going to be an overnight maybe drawdown gets a little bit a little bit worse before it gets better because overnight nobody is going to come in and start trading overnight because they want to see hey how the market is doing out, out of asian asia market or japanese and australian markets they open first and usually they are very risk averse so whatever the trend was on friday at the closing is what they keep going and keep doing so i am not really expecting a bounce back till the morning mid morning ish when europe is in full uh, strength fully uh, in that's exactly when i'm expecting uh, a bounce back a meaningful bounce back so they cannot be at this extreme emotion and then be uh you know going for days and days and days it, it just doesn't happen that way it just doesn't work out that way because now what happens is now there's been an extreme move in both canadian dollar and uchf people have made a lot of money and i'm telling you how and why bounce backs happen because they have made a lot of money in a very very short amount of time what they want to do is even with, with a little bit of reversal they want to book their profits because they have that said they're trailing uh profits that they want to book they don't want to lose out on all these hundreds and hundreds of pips that they've already built so now any kind of bounce back they're going to start taking profit that means they'll start closing their trades and that's going to fuel that bounce back or the reversal that i am expecting that should happen very very soon because as i said going into the weekend the sentiments were extreme that's why the prices got extreme and that's why we have the situation that we have right now so now when the market opens uh tonight um uh, on sunday night and going into monday morning uh i'm not expecting a whole lot of fireworks uh maybe 20 30 pips uh, may go against us not not more than that not more than that at all because the not unless there is war that breaks out between now and then then all bets are off then we are talking a different game then we are talking okay how do we save our accounts how do we put on severe like really really aggressive hedges but again that's not i don't want to scare you guys i don't want to get to that point yet because we are nowhere close to that point so now what i want to concentrate is that assuming there is no war between now while i'm recording this and uh tomorrow morning i am not expecting much to happen between now and then and then tomorrow morning i'm assuming again there is no war then we should start seeing the bounce back and start e seeing the ease uh in some of the positions and then cad chf the chf should cool down a little bit cad should recover a little bit okay so that is why i told you guys why chf or swiss or swissy is uh, swiss franc is getting so strong and getting such a bid let's talk about uh canadian dollar 
and that guys, I've been telling you guys, if you've been following my videos and my commentaries, I've been, I'm seeing this from a mile away. But did I expect this kind of carnage? No, I didn't. Uh, this is this is ugly, guys. Canadian dollar is an absolute ugly, 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 ugly. And there are so many different reasons. I covered that in one of my videos that I did last week. But I would cover a bit more of those reasons again here and now. Is Canadian guy, dollar, guys, the biggest revenue generation for Canada is oil. It's one of the uh, biggest oil producers in the globe and especially out of Alberta they have sands, uh, oil sands where they extract oil out of and they actually send it down to the US for refinement of that oil. So oil prices have been crashing uh, recently. So that is one of the biggest factors why Canadian dollar is taking a hit because Canadian dollar is directly tied to oil prices because that's their biggest export. Lumber is their biggest export, uh, second biggest export. So lumber prices are ca crashing. Oil prices are crashing. All the other commodities that they produce, the prices are crashing left and right. So that is taking a huge toll on the Canadian dollar because the income that they have, the, that's worth less and less and less. So the currency, that income is denominated in also is worth less and less and less. So it's like a perfect storm brewing for a Canadian dollar for a very, very long time now. We, you could see from a mile apart, mile away, that, hey, Canadian dollar is not going to be a, a solid currency or it's not going to keep its strength for too long. So that is one thing, that commodities and oil in specific is taking a huge hit and that is directly impacting a Canadian dollar. So another big factor is the inflation and how they are counting their inflation and how they're misrepresenting their numbers. And as a result of that misrepresentation, they are bringing their interest rates down. Inflation is cooling down. The rate of increase in uh, inflation is coming down. In other words, things are still getting more expensive. It's going to cost you more to buy same things every month. But the rate of increase has slowed down. That doesn't mean inflation is not there. It's just that it's, it's as severe as before. Tomorrow is going to be more severe. It's just that the rate of increase from current to tomorrow's is not as bad as it was a month ago or a year ago. That doesn't mean inflation is stopping. So we, they need to stop inflation in its tracks. What they're doing is they're lowering the interest rates. Why? To save their housing market. Because Canada has, see, it's all interconnected. See how I started with oil to inflation, now to housing. Now inflation and housing, you would say like, why? How does that matter? Because housing, Canada has the biggest housing bubble in the entire globe, right? Only to rival, the only one that rivals Canada, uh, the housing bubble is Australia. So Australia and Canada, we'll talk about Australia in another video, but right now I just want to concentrate on Swiss franc and, and Canadian dollar as to why things are the way they are. Okay, and then Canadian dollar is taking a hit, as I said, number one, because of inflation. Number two, because, uh, sorry, number one, because of oil. Number two, because of inflation and the way they are under-reporting the inflation because they want to save their housing bubble or the housing prices by misrepresenting their inflation number so they can bring down the interest rates so people can afford mortgages, people can afford more debt. So at the end of the day, how do you prop up a housing market by making it affordable for people? And then only way to afford, make it affordable for people is to increase, oh sorry, uh, to uh, lower the interest rates so they can afford more and more mortgage. So the other way to do that is by bringing the house pricing down. But they don't want to do that. They don't want to deflate the housing bubble because the political will is just not there because that's the other thing uh, moving on to. So now the first thing is oil. Second thing is inflation. Third thing is the housing market bubble that they do not want to deflate. And the fourth thing is the current political environment is so ugly in Canada, guys. I am on the ground and I can tell you guys it doesn't get any worse. 
the the Justin Trudeau, the uh, the prime minister of the country, is just a buffoon. He is, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a word. I don't want to use derogatory word on our uh, because we are a strictly financial uh, group and we just want to talk about money, how to make money, how to navigate through the markets. But these guys are absolute idiots that are actually running the country right now. Their immigration policy sucks. The racial divide in the country is at its extreme. The international students uh, have set up tent cities in the middle of major cities of, uh, of Canada. So it's wrecking havoc right now. Uh, the social fabric of the country has never been more fragile uh, when it comes to racial tensions and when it comes to hatred towards immigrants, when it comes to hatred towards students. And there's a good reason. And there is an absolute valid reason as to why there are so many things. But again, this is not a political commentary. I'm just trying to give you guys a reason why Canadian dollar, Canada as a country is in a decline. So international image of Canada, of the country, is also on a huge decline. And Canada is no longer the safe haven, the polite country where everybody used to go, uh, love to go. Now everybody hates Canada. Everybody hates what Canada has to offer, which is absolutely nothing. Uh, so anyway, so these are the reasons, some of the reasons why Canadian dollar is taking a hit. Now, is it going to last forever? No, absolutely not. Nothing lasts forever. So it is going to come around. It's going to turn around. I just don't know when. But right now, it is at such an extreme, it cannot go any lower. The only place for it to go is up. That's how bad it is, the Canadian dollar sentiment. And the bounce is going to be very, very dramatic, in my opinion. And that it should happen soon. Tomorrow day after, I don't, that I don't know. Timing is, guys, I don't know. That I don't know. But it is due for a bounce. It is due for some kind of a counter trend uh, rally, both on in the UCHF uh, and, and uh, CAD. And, and I'm expecting it, especially the pair that is causing us the hurt is going to happen uh, sooner than later, in my opinion. And then now, let's, let me talk about how did we get into this position. Because we have already trades that are going on for CAD, CHF, and EUR, CAD. And already some of the sub subsequent order, orders had opened. So that got our equity down a little bit. That uh, brought our doubt, drawdown like 5, 8, 10%. So once we have that kind of drawdown based on our strategy, we start, we go into the order management uh, mode where we don't want to close those trades because we don't want to take that hit. And we are, we usually then take on hedges to protect our account. And then if the prices, they, they uh, resume back to where we expect, we close those hedges. And then you know we ride the wave, and then we close the uh, all the all the orders when they uh, get to a profitable state. So now what happened was we decided that hey, we are not going to close these orders because we were already in a, in a drawdown. So now we were expecting to take hedges, but we don't want to take a hedge in a in a falling market. We don't want to catch a falling knife. So we said, okay, you know what? We may increase our drawdown a little bit. But let prices settle down a little bit before we take our hedges. And that did not happen. And that kept going down and down and down and down and down and down where it went to that ex absolutely extreme level. And then we are still waiting for that uh, to happen where we are expecting the prices to stabilize a little bit before we take our hedges. So that is where we are. And that's how we got into this. And that's where we are at. And are we expecting the things to get much worse? Maybe for a few hours. A few hours, yes, they can get more, especially overnight tonight, but not for much longer than that. So as soon as prices, they stabilize, we're going to put our hedges in, we are going to recover, and then all of this will go back and look, it'll be a learning experience for us, and we are going to talk more about this on, a, on, a, on our future videos and discussions. So idea is, that have we seen this before? 100% yes. We have seen this multiple times before. We have gone out of this kind of situation multiple times before. And I don't see a reason why we won't be able to get out of this one. But are there any certainties? There are no certainties in life, guys. There 
that's why forex trading is very risky that is why we need to keep our cool that is why we need to stick with our strategies and then other some of the folks are asking me what are you changing what, how what are you changing now to uh get out of this i said we are not changing absolutely anything we are changing nothing we are staying put we are deploying our strategies the way we have all these years we are changing nothing because saying those strategies have worked for us those strategies have proven themselves over and over again for years and years and years so we are not going to change anything we are going to stick with the, our strategy stick with our rules till the end we are going to keep our calm we are not going to panic we are going to sail through this storm we are in a storm right now and the last thing as a pilot as a driver as a navigator the last thing i can do is panic and we are not going to panic we're going to keep our cool we're going to review and view the markets and situation as they come to us and we react to based on that based on what we have done in the past and what we have seen work in the past i am not going to try anything new at this point it is not going to work and i am not going to risk anybody's money anybody's uh capital just for the sake of trying something different no that is not going to happen we are going to stick with what has worked in the past we are going to keep our emotions in check that is wha- what we have learned over the years that is what has worked for us over the years so getting worried is very natural guys that is very very it's a good emotion to have worried panic is what we shouldn't getting worried is an absolute perfect human emotion because i like to get worried because then my senses they work better i make sure i'm dotting all the i's i'm making sure i'm crossing all the t's and i'm making sure i'm following everything to the absolute uh perfection that i'm supposed to that's what worrying does to me at least that I, it makes me a more efficient uh planner it makes you a more efficient executioner but panic is something that we cannot have panic is something that we cannot do at this point because it is going to make matters worse i am not going to uh do something out of the ordinary just because i want something more dramatic or something no none of that is going to happen here worrying yes it's good to worry panic absolutely not we're going to keep our cool emotions yes they they run high uh emotions are high everywhere but how to navigate through those emotions ups and highs and keeping your cool and making sure we stick stick to our strategy that is what differentiates us from everybody else that is what keeps us on that 10% where only the 10% of the traders they actually make it through forex trading 90% of them they don't make it so i want to make sure that we stay on the 10% side and now don't get on the 90% side because emotions that's where the what they what they get you from that 10% into that 90% zone so that's it i think i've said a lot i i hope it makes sense and i encourage you guys to ask me whatever questions you have there's no question as a stupid question is your money is your group is your family we are in this together that's why i'm calling it road to a million group we are going to ride this thing all the way to the end so participate ask keep me honest and we're going to get through this we're going to get through this i don't know how like i don't know they have the exact uh, prediction as to oh this is going to happen tomorrow tomorrow or this is going to happen day after tomorrow no i don't have any of that but we are going to react with cool mind with total precision with proven strategies as and when situation arises and is presented to us uh that said uh would don't want to take too much more of your time it's sunday you guys go back enjoy your time spend your time with your family let us worry about the forex trading all right guys i'll talk to you soon and i'll keep you guys updated thank you